Hey, I'm Sarah and this is Thrills and Kills Booktube where we talk about everything horror, thriller, and true crime. Today I'm going over my March TBR plans. So I am filming this on March 1st, which means Happy Women's History Month. I thought it would be fine for the month of March to solely read from female authors. And because I read horror and thrillers, the majority of these are going to be female horror authors. This month is also special in that at the end of this month, I believe on March 28th, T. Kingfisher's newest book, The House with Good Bones, will be published. And she is one of my favorite horror authors. She also is going to be at my local indie bookstore on pub day talking about her newest book and signing it. So I've already pre-purchased a copy that I can get signed there and I will hopefully have some vlog footage of that day at the end of the month. So my plan is to do a T. Kingfisher themed reading vlog. Now I am not necessarily someone who can follow a strict TBR. I like to leave room for mood reading or if I unexpectedly get one of my library holds to come in early, or if I just find out something fun and wanna do like a read along with a friend or a book club. So I've got some ideas of what I want to get to this month. I know I wanna focus on female authors, and I know I wanna do this T. Kingfisher reading vlog in anticipation of her new release. Beyond that, anything is fair game. I may not read any of these. I may read these and many, many more. So we'll just have to see how it is when I do the monthly wrap up. So let's get into it. Like I mentioned, I'm going to do a T. Kingfisher reading vlog and I'm planning to read her three books and then I will kind of compare which one did I like the best, which one did I like the least, etc. I have read uh, What Moves the Dead. It's over here somewhere. Really, really enjoyed it. Um, I started the Twisted Ones a while back and never finished it. I wouldn't say it was a DNF. It was just more like I ran out of steam. So I am going to be reading both the Twisted Ones and Hollow Places. I'll read those <laughs> towards the beginning to middle of March. That way by the end of March when her newest book comes out, The House of Good Bones, I can read that one in time to finish it, make my video, edit it, and get it up before the end of the month. A lot that's a lot to ask for so if you're not familiar um the twisted ones was published in 2019 the hollow places was published in 2020 and t king Fisher, which is her pen name actually is a north carolina based author i'm in north carolina many of her books including her newest one take place in north carolina so i love that about it all right so the twisted ones there is a dog and i've already checked it out that the dog survives i can't take i can't handle a book where the dog is harmed so this girl, young woman named Mouse and her dog, they go to her grandparents' house because her grandmother has passed and she is charged with cleaning it up and, and getting it ready. The problem is her grandmother was a hoarder. So this is quite a job. This is not just like your run of the mill, taking care of your dead grandma's antiques and family heirlooms. No, this is going to be a huge job for her. And she stumbles upon her grandfather's journal when she's trying to clean out this house and she starts reading it just naturally because she's curious, but then things start getting weird. So she thinks that she's reading the journal of just like an old man who's maybe got some dementia going senile and like just some rantings and ravings. But then she starts realizing that some of the things she's read about in the journal are actually coming true and are happening to her and her dog, especially when she goes in the woods outside of the house. It says that outside in the woods alone with her dog, Mouse has to confront a series of impossible terrors because sometimes the things that go bump in the night are real and they're looking for you. I think this is supposed to be sort of like folk horror. Then we've got, like I said, The Hollow Places. That'll be the next one I read. And this is like the way I describe this um, based on what I've read is like Narnia from hell. So this also has a young woman uh, and she has going to her uncle's house. Is it her uncle? Yes, her uncle Earl. And he's very eccentric and he runs sort of like a museum or like a, just like a side of the road, like tourist pit stop type thing out of his house. And he calls it the glory to God museum of natural wonders, curiosities, and taxidermy. So she's working there. She's trying to like start over after a divorce and she's closing up one night and comes across something weird. She finds a mysterious hole in the drywall, an opening that impossibly leads her and her new friend Simon to a sprawling area that simply can't be part of North Carolina's plane of existence. 
They explore the apparently limitless depths of this bizarre and frightening new world, a hub containing portals to alternate realities. So like I said, Narnia from hell. And then I will finish my T. Kingfisher reading vlog again with reading her newest release, The House with Good Bones. And this is a situation where this woman also is coming back to her mother's house to help her. She pulls up to the house and she sees that there's these weird vultures hanging around and her mom is just at, not acting normal and things are kind of out of place in the house and she's trying to figure out why is this like buzzard vulture just circling around the house? Obviously it's a bad omen. That's about all I know, but if T. Kingfisher wrote it, I want to read it. Okay, so those are the books for sure I want to get to because I've got the themed reading vlog plans. My other plans for the year was I wanted to work through both my NetGalley books that I have waiting for me and then like my backlist, so my physical books that I have sitting on the shelf that have been there for a while and I haven't gotten to them. So I have chosen to go along with, you know, reading female authors for March. I have The Lost Village by Camilla Sten. I've got the physical copy and the Kindle actually. Haven't read either of them. This is sort of like a found footage documentary crew. Is there a cult? Is there not a cult? But basically there was a town of about 900 people where just one day everyone was up and gone, like, like the rapture. And this woman is coming in with her documentary crew. Her name's Alice Linstead. And she's trying to figure out what happened to this lost village when everyone just disappeared in 1959. However, not long after they've set up camp, strange things begin to happen as they do. Equipment is destroyed, people go missing and doubt breeds fear and their minds begin to crack. One thing becomes startling clear to Alice, they are not alone. Hopefully I'll get to it. If I'm going to pick a book up off my shelves, this will, I guess, be my priority. Let's put it that way. It's not a strict TBR. It kind of leaves some re room for mood reading. That's kind of how I try to go about things. As far as my NetGalley backlist, I really need to make an effort to get to this and make it a priority, which is V Castro's upcoming release coming out in April, The Haunting of Alejandra. And this is sort of a retelling of the Mexican folklore of La Llorona. And I know it has to do with postpartum depression. I've heard there's a lot of trigger warnings around like postpartum depression and uh, infertility and general depression and all that. So I've heard some pretty bad things about it from people who I tend to trust their reviews and tend to have similar um, tastes in books. We'll see, I wanna give it a fair shot, especially cause it's, it's been waiting for me on my neck alley shelf. Uh, and because it comes out in April, I wanna try and make that a priority here in March. Now I do have a book waiting for me that just came in on Libby. This is also by a female author. And so this is called From Here to Eternity by Caitlin Doherty. And if you have ever read The Smoke Gets in Your Eyes, that's also written by her. The full title is From Here to Eternity, Traveling the World to Find the Good Death. Lately, I've been really into morbid um, nonfiction. I recently read and loved All the Living and the Dead, this yellow book here, which focuses on various careers in the death industry, everything from like embalmers to executioners. And this just seems like right up my alley. So Caitlin Dowdy is a mortician by trade, so that's why she tends to write about these morbid topics. And it says in this book that she embarks on a global expedition to discover how other cultures care for the dead. From Zoroastrian sky burials to wish-granting Bolivian skulls, she investigates the world's funerary customs and expands our sense of what it means to treat the dead with dignity. I'm really excited about this. I am just fascinated by the Mexican culture of um, Dia de Muertos. One second, let me see if I can. So she's seen better days. She's got a missing arm, but this is one of my uh, Katrina dolls. I got this in Mexico a few years ago um, and they are associated with Dia de Muertos. And I actually went to Mexico City. Hold on, let me put it back. In 2019, I went to Mexico City and there was a huge parade and they had all these big ofrendas, um, which was like these altars um, dedicated to their loved ones who passed in like the town square. I'll have to see if I can put like some footage in here of that. I know I've got it somewhere. But I've always been interested in the death industry and what does it mean to die with dignity and treat the dead with dignity. And so I think I'm really going to enjoy this book. Okay, and the last book that I may or may not get to, this is a new release. I actually 
pre-ordered it and when I was sitting down to think about what I wanted to read in March I had completely forgotten about this book and then I got a little notification that it's going to be arriving tomorrow because tomorrow is pub day and I had pre-ordered this off of Amazon and this is The Institution by Helen Fields. It says The Institution, the gasp-inducing new killer crime thriller for 2023. I've never read anything by Helen Fields but when I read the description, apparently I thought it was interesting enough to pre-order it. They're locked up for your safety and now you're locked in with them. Dr. Connie Woolwine has five days to catch a killer. On a locked ward in the world's highest security prison hospital, a scream shatters the night. The next morning, a nurse's body is found and her daughter has been taken. A ransom must be paid and the clock is ticking. Forensic profiler Dr. Connie Woolwine is renowned for her ability to get inside the mind of a murderer. Now she must go deep undercover among the most deranged and dangerous men on earth and use her unique skills to find the girl before it's too late. That sounds really interesting. It's giving vibes of like Silence of the Lambs in a way, obviously like the Mindhunter series, or if you've ever seen um, the Hannibal TV show, I think that was that on the CW, I forget what channel, but, and also what's that? What's that movie that Leonardo DiCaprio was in? Something Island? Shutter Island? It's given vibes like Shutter Island in a way. We'll see if I get to it. If not, no harm, no foul. I just thought, let me throw it on this list since I know it will be delivered tomorrow. All right, that's my kind of rough outline of what I want to read for March. If I get to all those, it's seven books. For me, that's completely doable in a month as long as I kind of like prioritize. Definitely want to make sure I do those three T Kingfisher books and I will try and get some footage for you from the author event that I'm going to on publication day. I think she's gonna be giving a little bit of talk and I may or may not be meeting up with someone there who's also here on booktube. We'll keep that a surprise. Um, and yeah, and as long as I read female authors in March, no matter how many books I get to, if they're on this list, not on this list, I'll be happy with whatever I end up reading. So that's everything I have for you today. Make sure that if you haven't already watched it, I have a really exciting announcement video that I just put up about some exciting readathon plans for the month of April. I'm going to be a co-host uh, for Old School April, which is a competition-based, like nostalgia-themed readathon, watchathon, like just month long, really fun event. So anything that was either published or is set in the year 2003 or before. I'll be focusing on 90s and early 2000s because that's when I grew up. So make sure you check out that video if you haven't already. And if you are not subscribed, please do so that way you get notifications of when I upload new videos. And I'd love to hear from you down below. What book are you most looking forward to reading in the month of March? That's everything I have today. Thanks guys.